Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 82nd week. Sweeney clear the floor, Katie bar that door, Molly put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we get this show on the road. It's another full house today, not a chair to spare. I'm your host, Mike O'Laughlin, and you can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com, and you can check out our written show notes on the blog. We also have links there. You can just click to go to these places I'm talking about in the podcast. Much easier than trying to type all that writing down, you know. Uh, and it's just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. And remember, you can phone 816-256-3360 to leave your comments, your family search, or your song or recitation on my recorder. It's about time we get that song and recitation uh, broadcast up uh, uh, going again for the second season. I need to find some time to do that. So if any, any of you out there know some Irish song history or might be able to sing a little bit on your, of your own, uh, give me a call. We'll see if we can put something together. Try it. You'll like it. Well, what do we have among today's topics? Johnson is the name of the week. Queens County, Ireland is the book of the month. Johnson and Queens County, Ireland are the websites of the day. Uh, family research information on Irish television, that's RTE, and top genealogy blog list. I wonder who made that. Could it be us? And number six, a 10,000-year-old woman, they say, is found near a dolmen in County Clare. And number seven, the cleanest town in Ireland is... We've got all that and more coming up just shortly, folks. Hey, and this reminds me, remember to get all three of my free broadcasts online. Uh, you can go to our blog and just click on them, or you can go to uh, irishroots.com and find them all there. They're all podcasts. And now, of course, we have uh, this podcast in two formats. Uh, one, just the regular old audio that we've been doing for a couple of years now. And the other is uh, has got little pictures that come along with it, little still pictures. And uh, you can click in there on links that take you to the, maybe the books we're talking about, that type of thing. Uh, we're just experimenting with it, but it's a lot of fun. And we'll get better with it as we go along. Uh, try to have more helpful stuff there each day. Uh, well, what notes do we have here? I think we're going to, uh, we got a call here. Of course, any of you folks can do that are out there. We've got a call here. It's an audio note. It's from Jonathan, and he gave us uh, some notes on his family and uh, his experience with the Irish Roots Cafe here. Uh, so uh, let's, let's take a listen to what Jonathan had to say on the hotline. Hello, Mike. Jonathan Singer, New Haven, Connecticut. Um, anyway, thank you for putting me on Irish Roots Cafe website. Uh, my aunt is uh, a Burns, and her grandmother was a Powell. Her mother was a Burns. Um, anyway, obviously, you're still at the same address that's at the computer, so I'll send you a letter, and if you have any books for sale on the history of the O'Burns and or the Powers, I'd be delighted to order a copy. Um, I also bought Keating's History of Ireland from you, and also I have a couple other books like Irish Families Great and Small. It helps me in my research, and I have Irish names and surnames by Wolf, which I bought from you also in Irish Family Names and Irish Book of Arms. Um, anyway, that's the name, that's the story of that, and you can call back and leave a message on my machine, or you can write to me, I'm still at the same address. Thanks again for putting me on Irish Roots Cafe list, Aaron Gobra, and also, um, have a nice Labor Day too, bye. Well, thanks Jonathan, appreciate that, I always like hearing from folks and hearing what they've done and what they like and what they've got. Uh, number two, let's move on to the second note of the week. I got a letter here, an email said, Hi, Mike, we just posted an article, 100 Awesome Blogs for History Junkies. And she said, I thought I'd bring it to your attention in case your readers would find it interesting. Well, I'm sure my readers would find anything interesting if it's interesting. And she says, I'm happy to let you know that your site has been included in this list. Boy, that was great. I took and checked, checked it out. We're on the, we're the top 10 uh, on the little genealogy category there. Um, I sure appreciate that. And she says, feel free to bookmark it on Delicious if you like the article. And either way, thank you for your time, Kelly Sonora. 
Well, our thanks to Kelly for that. We sure appreciate it. Every little bit gets the word out, and that's great for all of us. Uh, number three note for the week, County Meath Records Online. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but the birth, marriage, and death records from the Meath Heritage Center uh, are online, and that leaves about 13.5 million records like this online to date. Uh, and they're, well, I'll have the link that you can get them at. They're posted uh, on the web and, and the uh, uh, Irish Family History uh, site that, that they're on. You can go to a couple different options there. Uh, but that just goes to show you more and more records coming online. But don't forget to research your heritage right along with researching all those names and dates. That's really what gives life to the bones. Number four, hey, I found out there's three new television series being announced by RTE. That's the uh, Irish television station, you know. And it said uh, they're doing these three. Uh, they're the, the, the Who Do You Think You Are series, which is sort of genealogy. Uh, they've got uh, Ardell O'Hanlon, Charlie Bird, Joe Duffy, Dana Rosemary Scallon. And Pamela Flood are going to trace their family trees on that series. So if you've got one of those surnames, you want, might want to jump in there. And even if you didn't, you might see what sources they use to find their family. Nobody can afford, the, afford all the money they spend on these TV shows to uh, trace a family back. So that could be real helpful. Uh, number two, uh, the second TV series, they've got Blood of the Irish. And that's going to trace the origins of the Irish people from ancient days it uh, takes them all the way through Europe and even further. I think it might even go all the way back to Africa. That'll be real interesting, especially if you have an interest in finding out what that DNA can tell you on that kind of thing. Uh, the, and the third series they're coming out with is called Death or Canada. Well, that's sort of like the, what they said about Connaught. Uh, uh, and it explores the lives of the Irish who escaped the famine and settled in Toronto. And, of course, what they escaped was the same thing everybody escaped, those that came to to America and Australia and uh, uh, North North and South America. So that'll be of interest to just about everybody. And we'll have a link on the blog that'll show just where you can find uh, the information on that new TV season in Ireland. Tells you a bunch of other things they've got going up there. So that'll be interesting. Check that link out on the blog. Now, what is it? Well, it's time to raise our eyes skywards, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Number one, new member Sandra Evans of Atwater, Minnesota, searching for Gilday, Reynolds, McLaughlin, Roach, and Roach, spelled O-C-H-E or O-A-C-H. Uh, number two, new member Maureen Harmon of Albany, New York. She says, two of my ancestors came from Ross Common, Mary Farrell, born 1813, and Patrick Kennedy, Patrick Kenny, born 1815. I believe they married in Ross Common before coming to New York City, eventually settling in Plains, Pennsylvania by 1850. Both were Roman Catholic, and she said she plans to go to Pennsylvania to find out more information about their lives. And if you can help her, please be sure to get a hold of me here at irishroots.com. We'll put you all in contact. And here we got uh, number three, new member uh, Seamus Ho Hojnowski of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I've talked to him several times on via email on books and, and, and the like. And uh, he's searching for Alexander Long, born in Killybegs, maybe Killybegs Upper. In 1784, married Catherine Kilpatrick. Uh, 1809, Mount Charles, they had... James or John in 1850, who married Isabella and had great great grandpop George in 1849. Boy, a lot of research has already been done there. I think uh, James is trying to find out uh, just what family he goes back to. Are these this long family? Would that be an English family? Would it be a, a Norman family? Would it be an Irish family translated into the name of Long? If you got any ideas or any help, be sure to let us know. You can even call that in on our phone line if you want, and uh, we can pass it on that way, or I can do it via email. Uh, number four, John J. Horgan. Your Cork Books and Donegal Books have shipped. Uh, Giles Flanagan of Brentwood, Tennessee. Your Surnames of Ireland book has shipped. Christine Gray of Beaverton, Oregon. Your Waterford uh, uh, Genealogy and Family History Notes has shipped. And Gary Kennelly of Rock Island, Illinois, your County Cary Genealogy and Family History Notes book has shipped as well. 
And that wraps up the Magnificent Seven for the day. It's time we move on to the Book of the Month. Well, this month it's going to be uh, Kings County and Queens County genealogy and family history notes. And we'll just focus on Queens County today. I've got a link to that book on the website and the uh, link on the Enhanced Podcast in that picture there will take you to our books pages, I think. Uh, makes it easier to find it. Uh, now, what kind of stuff are you going to find in this book? Well, it gives you a list of the 19th century uh, birth index, the names most commonly found, along with some possible very variant spellings after each name. And what were those names? They in, in Queens County, names like Dunn and Delaney and Conroy and Lowler, or Phelan, Fitzpatrick, Ryan, Carroll, Whalen, Byrne, Kavanaugh, Kenny, Brennan, Kelly, and Murphy along with all those variant spellings. I got a fuller list with the variant spellings on the blog, so be sure to check that out. And, uh, you know, we're also going to take a look at Queens County, uh, the families that we find on the map of the Four Masters. Uh, that's taken from the Annals of the Ireland by the Four Masters, the Canellan translation that we printed uh, back in 2003. And in Queens County, we'll have a full list, and it'll tell you which ones they said were earls and lords and chieftains and princes. Uh, we'll have a list on our blog. You can check that out too. But there are names like, well-known names like, of course, Butler and Fitzgerald, and then Fitzpatrick or MacGillpatrick and Grace and McElvery and uh, McCoglin and uh, MacGillpatrick. Yeah, oh, they're on there twice, maybe. Prince, I'm not sure. Uh, O'Dowling and O'Duff and O'Mooney and DeVacy and gosh, yeah, I tell you, that list just never ends. But uh, you can see the full list on that uh on our webpage, on the blog, just click click that. Mike's blog, I think it says over there on the left-hand hand corner, uh, or you can click that link in the Enhanced Podcast. That ought to take you right to our, our blog listings. Well, that ends that little segment. What do we got? You know, coming up later, we're going to show you who won the Tidy Town contest in Ireland. That's a pretty big deal. And if they win it, boy, they're sure a good place for the tourists to congregate next year because they know they're ready for them, and they're sure... Uh, up and energetic and they can handle the problems uh and we'll also find out where a 10,000 year old woman was found i wonder what county she'd be in and i wonder how she what kind of shape she was in that'd be interesting and that reminds me thank you to all of our members because without you these podcasts would not be possible so keep it coming folks it's really uh it's really uh you that are responsible for it so keep us going now we're going to move on to the Irish Family Name of the Week. And the name this week we picked uh, Johnson. And of course you all know that's a really common name. can have several different origins. And we're taking that in name of, uh, in honor of Pamela Majal of Brooklyn, New York. Searching for information on Robert Johnson, born March 8, 1896 in Port Arlington, Queens County looking for birth or baptism. And also member John T. Kelly of Rockford, Minnesota, searching for uh, George, born Newmarket, and Margaret Nee Hogan, born Noctifer. And, of course, Nee Hogan means Margaret Nee. Nee, of course, means uh, maiden name was. So Nee Hogan means her maiden name was Hogan. Uh, related spelling of the names, it'll surprise you. That's one reason why there's so many Johnsons from Ireland. Uh, uh, you can also find names like uh, uh, McOwen and Johnston and Johnson, spelled with J-O-N-S-O-N. McShane uh, can also be uh, translated or mistranslated as Johnson. And McGowan and Owen and Chaney. That's a good one. Chaney, because it sounds sort of like Shane or Shane, I guess would be a better pronunciation. And that's taken from the Master Guide to the various spellings of Irish family names, showing 32 spellings in all. Uh, so, boy, that can sure get confusing. And it's part of variant spelling groups in that book, number 965 and number 1404. Well, let's take a quick little glance at the history of the name Johnson. Most of the name of Johnson in Ireland are either of English or Scottish, Scottish extraction, but boy, not all of them, that's for sure. Uh, the name is common in, in England and Scotland, of course, and uh, unrelated families bear the name in both countries, so you have to uh, really check it out to be sure. And uh, it might be, they say, at least in, in the book Irish Families Great and Small, that uh, more of the name are English because Johnson is one of the top 10 most numerous names in England. 
Now, the name of Johnston, that's with a T added in there, that's a separate name, and it's Scottish, and uh, it's often confused or inter interchanged with Johnson, and you can understand that. That's how it happens to this day, I'm sure. And uh, <clears throat> we mentioned earlier, a name like Max Shane can be translated as Mick John or Son of John, which can become John's son. So a lot of them come from little formats like that. Keep that in mind if you're having some trouble in your research back in earlier days. Uh, hey, we've got one mention of the Johnson family of Rockingham County, Cork, who descended from William Johnston or Johnson, uh, a native of Scotland who settled in Ireland around 1670. So I wonder if you're related to that line. And that is the family line that is given in the uh, Irish Book of Arms, and it's a uh, uh, black and white illustration of those arms are in there if you're interested in that. And the birth index of 1890 finds the family centered in Cork, Dublin, and Antrim. And that's the end of that section, and thanks for the uh, Book of Irish Families references there. And uh, we'll move on to the last part of this thing. It's the free master index search of Irish names at irishroots.com. We press the little button, and we find the family 103 times in our little free index there. And, uh, well, here, let's just pick seven of them real quick. Uh, our families of county book, our hardbound books, they're in, gosh, they may be in all of them, but it's particularly in Kerry, Limerick, and Cork that I see right off the bat. And uh, the great histories of Ireland have the name too. Keating's History of Ireland has Johnson in there. Uh, the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters has the Johnson name. And J.W. Johnson is found in Irish Families on the California Trail. That's a book I just put together a year or two ago. And uh, Sir William Johnson is in uh, volume four of the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society. Uh, and there's a mention of an Irishman of Johnson Hall. Uh, number six, Patrick Tracy Johnson is found in volume 10 of that same uh, series of periodicals. And Pinner's Survey of Ireland contains uh, several of the Johnson name, including A. Johnson and W. Johnson. I guess that could be Andrew and Walter or William. But all, we, all I had time to do, I think, was type those first initials in there. And uh, now I wish I would have spelled out the whole name, but I think I would have got so tired I never would have finished that index. Uh, website of the week. I think it's time to move on there right now. Well, website of the week is going to be for uh, Queens County Genealogy. The link will be on the... Uh, Web page, and that's a, a site that contains information for County Leash or Queens County, currently held uh, in the uh, Queens County section of the author's From Ireland website, plus a lot more. And that was put together by Dr. Jane Lyons. That's an interesting one, especially if you're uh, looking over there in Queens County. So the link will be on the uh, web page on the blog. And our second one will be the Johnson Family Genealogy Forum. I'll have a link for that on the blog, too. And that site includes thousands of messages on Johnson's families, uh, Johnson families of all types, including those that came from Ireland. So you might sit back and then prepare to spend uh, 10 or 50 or 100 minutes on that one. Uh, boy, this has gone great. This is a quick one. And uh, let's move on to curious news and notes before we wrap up for the day. Number one, cleaning O'Brien's Tower. If you've been to the Cliffs of Moher, then you'll remember O'Brien's Tower, the highest point there. You can look out and see uh, the Aran Islands on some of those days, if it's real clear, they say, and some of those big waves that come in. Uh, it, that tower was put together in 1835 by Cornelius O'Brien, and uh, several hundred thousand dollars are said to have been spent, or in the process of being spent, uh, fixing that tower up, re replacing the stairway, that sort of thing. And it's expected to reopen in 2009, and you'll really be able to get a better view again from the cliffs. You'll be able to see the whole, uh, the whole panorama, so to speak. Number two, John Dolan and a group of Galway men have bought the island of England. Uh, that's the island in Dubai, uh, and, they, and they did that, and they outbid all those from the other island of that name, to some of their consternation, I think. So uh, three cheers to John Dolan and your investment group there that bought England. Very, very shrewd deal. 
Number three, Judge Mary Fahey decided to pardon nine restaurants that served wine and beer with meals on Good Friday. She said that the convictions were ridiculous and ludicrous. Number four, a 10,000-year-old body found at uh, Caraconnell Stone Fort in County Clare, just a few meters, 10 or 15 meters from the Polnaburen uh, uh, Dolman, has been nicknamed Pauline, and her, rena- her remains have been sent away for radiocarbon dating, which is really a good thing because in reading the articles on that, one scientist said, well, uh, she's 4,000 years old, old Pauline is, but then another one says, Old Pauline could be the oldest uh, body ever found in Ireland, and she could be 10,000 years old. And somebody else might think old Pauline was their aunt who just passed away a few years ago. I don't know, but place your bet on the truth, and let's rely on radiocarbon dating. Number five, over 700 towns competed in this year's uh, 50th contest to be named Tidy Town. The winner this year is Westport County Mayo, the cleanest town in Ireland. And uh, we've been there, and that sure was a nice, well-organized town. We enjoyed it. Uh, And we sure you will, too. So you might put that on your uh, agenda if you're traveling uh, along that west coast of Ireland. Go up there a little bit to the north, and uh, you'll be able to see Granuel's uh, stronghold as well. That was the... uh, Granuel was old Grace O'Malley, the pirate sea queen. She even met with Queen Elizabeth, I think they said, so... She was very prominent in her day. Well, that does it for now. Uh, Remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at www.irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message, your research tip, or a unique story about your Irish family and your part of the world uh, when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. And you can also Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, I'm on uh, MySpace now, too, seeing if that's going to work. I never know if that sort of thing works or not, but I'm going to try. And I think I'm on there as Irish Roots Cafe, too. Uh, Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. (laughs) 